ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله جل وعلا وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وان شر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار My brothers and sisters in Islam, in today's khutbah, I wanted to share with you a few reflections from a story in the Qur'an. Of course, the stories in the Qur'an are stories that Allah Himself narrates. So they are the absolute truth. And not only that, they offer immense and great guidance for the believers. And the stories in the Qur'an, they were guidance for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imagine the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we are following his sunnah, but he would take guidance from the stories in the Qur'an. So we are in desperate need of the guidance in the stories. And this is some reflections from the story of Adam alayhi salam and his two sons. Adam alayhi salam, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created him in the paradise, he allowed him to roam freely in the paradise and eat whatever he wants, except for one tree. Allah azza wa jal, he said to Adam and Hawa, la taqraba hadhihi shajara, don't come near this tree. It's a forbidden tree, it's haram, it's a sin, don't eat from it. Why? Allahu alam, Allah has made it haram, right? So, Eventually, a shaytan reels him towards this sin. He deceives him. Adam alayhi salam would end up eating from this tree. But we need to understand something. Why did Adam eat from the tree? What happened? What did the shaytan do to him? The shaytan, he decorated this sin. He decorated it. He beautified it. He made it look good. You see, the sins are something filthy. They are despicable in nature, right? But he made it look beautiful. He beautified it. How did he beautify it? Shaytan, he came to Adam alayhi salam and he said to him, هَلْ أَدُلُّكَ عَلَى شَجَرَةِ الْخُلْدِ وَمُلْكِ اللَّا يَبْلَى He said to him, Adam, should I direct you and point you to a beautiful tree, a tree of eternal existence? Meaning if you eat from it, you will live forever and you'll never die. And he said to him, أو تكونا ملكين أو تكونا من الخالدين That if you eat from this tree, you, you Adam, you will become an angel. You and your wife, Hawa, would become angels. وخالدين, you will live in this paradise forever. So you need to understand something. A shaytan is always going to decorate and beautify the sin. And the believer needs to be aware of this. Adam ate from the tree because he didn't have a human being that existed before him that he can learn from his mistakes. So he fell in this trap of a shaitan and he ate from the tree. And that's the very same thing of the nature of sins today. Today, the sins are beautified and they are decorated and they look very nice and they are attractive. And as a result, when mankind, when the human falls into a sin, It's because of how beautified it has become. Look at the sins all around us. Today, for example, alcohol, its name is changed. It's called spirits. See how shaitan beautified and decorated this beverage? Alcohol is haram, but it's given the name spirits. Meaning if you drink from it, your spirit would be uplifted. And heck, you'll become at peace and you'll become tranquil. This is how it's marketed. That's how shaitan does with the sin. 
Look at, for example, drugs. You all know drugs are haram. Drugs will cause someone to die, causes depression. It causes all sorts of nasty matters. But drugs on the street, what are they called? They're called ice. You know, ice will speed. And there's something called ecstasy. And there's something called dust angel. Look at these names. Look how beautiful they sound. Yeah, and the ecstasy, in the dictionary, ecstasy means happiness. How can a drug, a filthy, nasty sin, be given the name happiness? When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said at the end of time, yusammunahu bighayr ismihi, that alcohol will be given a name other than its name. It's beautified. In other words, the sins become decorated. So you got this drug called speed. So the idea is if you take it, you become a, a, a speedy in your decisions, in your life, in your affairs, in your matters. It will make things easier for you. That's how it's decorated. And look at the sin of homosexuality, for example. A man and man, a woman and woman. They give it beautiful colors, rainbows, and they call it love is love. This is beautified. The sin has become beautified. When in nature it's filthy and it is disgusting. And it, it, it brings a person into lots of sicknesses and illnesses and diseases and so on. So the idea is you need to be careful. This happened from day one when Adam was in the paradise. The sin right before his eyes of shaitan decorated it. He said to him, eat from it. And you will become forever here in the paradise. You'll become an angel. And Adam alayhi salam ate from it. So now at least we have an example of people that fell into mistakes before so that we can learn. So always be careful. What you see in front of you, if it's a sin, it's a sin. No matter how beautified and decorated it is. That's the idea. And also when Adam ate from the tree, the, the scholars, rahimahumullah, they mentioned that he fell into this sin because Iblis took an oath by Allah that this is a tree of eternal existence. He took an oath. وَقَاسَمَهُمَا And uh, the scholars, they said that Adam did not believe that someone could use Allah's name to lie. He didn't believe it. So the day Iblis said, Uqsimu billah, wallahi, this is a tree of goodness. He went and ate from it because he didn't believe someone can use Allah's name and lie. And so here, my brothers and sisters in Islam, we need to also learn. Be careful. Never ever use Allah's name for a lie that you have and a lie you want to say. This is from the highest of wrong and it's considered a major sin. To use Allah's name to lie. If you've done something, don't say, Wallahi, I didn't do it. Hey, what's wrong with you? Why are you going to use Allah's name and ascribe it to a lie? When you say, Wallahi, and you lie, you know what initially you're saying? You are saying that Allah is a witness to such and such. You're lying. And so you're ascribing ignorance to Allah. That's what you're doing essentially when you use Allah's name to lie. So be very careful of this matter. If, if you are going to lie, which you shouldn't, don't use Allah's name. Don't say Wallahi. Remove that from your tongue and from your statement altogether. So be careful of this. Because Adam fell into a sin. He didn't fathom. He didn't comprehend. How can someone use Allah's name for a lie? When you're using Allah's name for a lie, you are saying Allah is ignorant. Allah doesn't know. And this is dangerous. This is your underlines of disbelief. So a person, if he has done this, he needs to repent and never do it ever again. So then afterwards, Adam alayhi salam and Hawa and Iblis were all removed from the paradise for this sin. We don't know why. Allahu alam. Lakin Allah azza wa has perfect wisdom in that which he does and decrees. So they came down to earth. When they came down to earth and they settled, now they are going to live the life of a human being that you and I know. No more the life of a human being in the paradise. The life of a human being on earth is completely different. So now you have to eat, you have to drink. In the paradise, you don't eat because you're hungry. 
In the paradise, you eat out of joy and happiness and pleasure, right? In the paradise, you don't have to sleep. Now they have to sleep. In the paradise, if you eat, you don't have to go to the bathroom and relieve yourself. But now on earth, you have to do. So they were now investigating and getting used to this human body and its new features and what else it has. So now they're also in need of reproducing and having children because generations and human beings are to exist on earth. So now Adam السلام, and Hawa begin to have children. They begin to have children. So Hawa السلام, gives birth to twins, a boy and a girl. And then later on, she also gives birth to another set of twins, a boy and a girl. Now, how is mankind going to produce and generate now? Who's going to marry who? These are all brothers and sisters. So what is the answer to this? They say at that time, there was an urgent and there was a necessity. And so how was the law at that time? The law was that the boy that comes out from the first pregnancy is allowed to marry the girl that comes out from the second pregnancy. And the boy in the second one marries the girl from the first pregnancy. That's halal. But the boy and girl that came out from the first pregnancy, they're not allowed to marry to each other. So now it's clear who's going to marry who. In the first pregnancy, there was Qabil and a girl. That's the son of Adam. His name was Qabil and there was a sister that came out with him. In the second pregnancy, there was a boy, his name was Habil, and a girl came out with him as well. Habil is accepting of this ID. He said, okay, fine, I'm Habil, I came out here, I'll marry this girl here. But Qabil did not accept this. Qabil, he wanted to marry the one he came out with because perhaps she was more prettier then the other girl that came out with Habib, he's not accepting to this law. So they went to their father Adam, deal in this matter and judge between us. What do we have to do? Allah Azza wa Jal, he said, وَاتْلُ عَلَيْهِمْ نَبَأْ أَبْنَيْ آدَمَ بِالْحَقِّ إِذْ قَرَّبَا قُرْبَانًا فَتُقُبِّلَ مِنْ أَحَدِهِمَا وَلَمْ يُتَقَبَّلْ مِنَ الْآخَرِ Adam alayhi salam came to his children and he said, I got a solution for you all. He said, Habib, go and get the best thing you have and offer it to Allah Azza wa Jal. Qabil, go and get the best thing you have, the best sadaqah you want to give and offer it to Allah. And how are they supposed to do this? Take whatever you have, go on top of a mountain and place it at the peak of the mountain and leave it. Overnight, what's going to happen? Allah is going to send a fire and the fire is going to burn and consume one of the two, whichever one of the two the fire consumes, then that person has the right to go ahead with that which he wants. So Habil went and he's a farmer and he got the best sheep he had, nice, healthy, fat sheep. He went and grabbed it and gave it as a sadaqah for Allah. He put it on the mountain. Qabil, he was, he was a farmer, uh, in crops and so on. So he went to his farm and he picked the worst crop, the worst, worst. He pulled it out from the earth and he put it up on the mountain. Overnight, Allah Azza wa sends a fire and it consumes what? It consumes the sheep. So that means the sadaqah, the, the, the sadaqah of Habil has been accepted. And as a result, Habil is now allowed to marry that girl that came out with Qabil. But the point here is this. Habil, why was his sadaqah accepted? Because he offered that which he had the very best of. He offered the best he had. And Qabil's sadaqah was rejected because he offered the worst he had. And so what do you learn from this? As a Muslim, you're supposed to always offer the best you have in life. When you're studying for an exam, you do the very best so that Allah Azza wa accepts from you. When you do an exam, you do the exam and you give it all you have, the very best of your effort. When you're giving advice to someone, you give the very best advice. When you are praying, you get the very best of salat and you pray it. Everything you do for Allah, 
offer the very best of the best you have. Put in maximum effort the most you can put, right? In every exam, in every study, with a relationship, with a friend, whatever it is. Give it the best you got, because that's what most likely will be accepted. If you give the worst of the worst, you need to question yourself. Is this what you want to offer Allah Azza wa Jal? For example, if you pray a rushed salat, what is this what you want to give Allah? Is this it? Is this it? This is what you're offering Allah? You should be very careful. When you're giving something to Allah, make sure it's the best of the best. Not because Allah needs it. Don't be confused. Allah doesn't need anything you do. You're the one that needs it and he'll give it to you as a gift on the day of judgment. Right? So, فَتُقُبِّلَ مِنْ أَحَادِهِمَا وَلَمْ يُتَقَبَّلْ مِنَ الْآخَرِ Allah Azza wa Jal accepted from Habil and he did not accept from Qabil. And then, مَنْ أَحَادِهِمَا وَلَمْ يُتَقَبَّلْ مِنَ الْآخَرِ قَالَ إِنَّمَا يَتَقَبَّلُ اللَّهِ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ Habil, he said, Allah accepts from the righteous. So that means offering the best is a sign of righteousness. When you offer the best, you are righteous. And that's what Allah has declared. So, Alhamdulillah, this is a blessing to know this. Now, Qabil is not accepting. You see, we did this whole thing and Qabil is still not accepting. Qabil wants to marry the girl that he came out with. So you know what happens next? Qabil becomes jealous of Habil, that Allah accepted from him. He became jealous. And this jealousy is a major sin. And whoever becomes jealous is imitating Iblis because Iblis was the first one to become jealous. And that is when he became jealous from Adam when Allah said to the angels to make sajda to Adam alayhi salam. He became jealous. And so the idea here is when you're in school, there might be some of your friends that excel and they are better than you in their studies and they get better marks and better results. You might have brothers and sisters in your house. Maybe your brother is better than you in memorizing Quran, in studying, in learning, in a certain sport. Maybe your friend is better than you in soccer and you have no clue how to play soccer. And so what does the shaitan do? He takes advantage of this moment to make you feel jealous about this friend. Hate on him. Say in your heart, I wish he loses his skills in soccer. I wish he fails his next exam. I hope he gets sick and he doesn't come to school to do the exam. Be careful. This is all from the shaitan. Jealousy is wrong in Islam. And whoever is jealous from someone else, you're only harming yourself and you're not harming the other person. Because the jealous person is always stressed. He's always he's nasty from the inside. It's difficult upon him. You're harming yourself. And the one you're jealous from, he doesn't care. He couldn't care what you think about him. So don't harm yourself. He said, does it make sense that a person gets a knife and stabs himself? This is what you're doing essentially when you are jealous from someone. But this feeling might emit from the heart. Sometimes it's not in your control. So how do you control jealousy and how do you suppress it? How do you control it? Very easy. First and foremost, understand that whatever people have is from Allah. It's from Allah. So if you're jealous from someone, that means you're not accepting what Allah gave him. Number two, do you want like what this person has? Would you like like him? Ask Allah Azza wa Jal from his favors and his blessings and Allah will give you even much better than him. And then the third thing is, go to this brother or to this sister of yours and say, brother, mashaAllah, what an awesome result. What an awesome goal that was. May Allah Azza wa Jal increase you in goodness and grant you even more success. That's how you kill jealousy in your heart. Go and show him how happy you are for his success. And as a result, if you do that, when you make dua for your brother, there is an angel that makes the very same dua for you. So if Allah Azza wa Jal accepts that dua, sooner or later, you'll become like him and perhaps much better. Allahu Alam. But these are matters in Allah Azza wa Jal's hand. But you're supposed to know how to approach these matters of jealousy. Jealousy is very bad. Look what it does now. So Qabil is jealous from his brother Habil. Absolutely jealous. So Allah Azza wa Jal, he says, 
آه الله عز وجل يسأل واتلو عليهم نبأ ابن آدم بالحق إذ قرب قربانا فتقبل من أحدهما ولم يتقبل من الآخر قال لا أقتلنك he said to him I want to kill you see where jealousy took him he wants to now kill him physically harm him and put an end to his life قال لا أقتلنك see if you don't control jealousy it continues to grow 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 until you do something really bad that you will regret قال لا أقتلنك I'm going to kill you قال إنما يتقبل الله من المتقين He now said to him لئن بسطت إلي يدك لتقتلني ما أنا بباسط يدي إليك لأقتلك So now Habil comes to his brother Qabil says to him Listen If you're going to extend your arm out to kill me I will not be extending my arm out to kill you I'm not going to do it and so what we learn here as well from the characteristic and the qualities of a believer is that when someone wants to harm you, yes, be strong, be tough, because the strong Muslim is loved to Allah Azza wa Jal, defend yourself. If a person wants to harm you, hold his hand back and push it away and say to him, fear Allah, a Muslim doesn't harm the other. So that, that's, that's a solution for bullying. That's a solution for bullying. When students bully each other, and hit each other and insult each other and curse each other and swear at each other. Don't do the same thing. Don't. If someone swore at you and someone cursed you or someone even wanted to harm you, defend yourself. Hold his hand back, push it. And, 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 and Habil in this state, he said, Inni rabbal alameen. I'm not, look, if I want, I could have harmed you. I could have swore at you as well. I can do it. Yeah, I got a tongue. But I fear Allah Azza wa Jal, so I don't want to engage in this practice. If your manners are horrible, why do I have to make my manners bad as well? La, I, 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 I'm class and I have Muslim etiquette and I walk as a Muslim, so I'm not going to allow your bad manners affect my manners. I'm not going to become bad as a result because you're bad. Leave it. Don't touch him and defend yourself, right? Inni uh, Allah. That's the reason. Because I fear Allah. And a Muslim with his Muslim brother is supposed to be good. He's supposed to be good. Right? So as a result, Inni Allah Rabbil Alameen. He then gave him advice. Habil says to him, Inni Uridu Antabu Abi Ifmi wa Ifmi. Fatakuna min Ashabin Nari wa Dalika Jaza of Dalimin. He said, I want, I, I, I don't want to harm you. And that's because if you harm me, then you are going to return back with your sins and the sin of my murder. And you'll be from the people of the fire. You'll be a loser. And that's the nature of sins. Anyone who approaches a sin is on a path to the hellfire. Unless he makes a tawbah and turns back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sins are harmful in all aspects of life. They destroy a person's mental health, emotional health, physical health. They destroy his spiritual health. That's what a sin does. And now he wants to commit a sin of murder. And any other sin does the same thing. And today the sins are plenty, right? People are, people are, are, are smoking, people are vaping, people are watching adult, adult content on their, on, on their phone, through their social media. All of these are sins. There's no goodness in a sin. It harms you. And no one else. So he gave him advice. He said to him, listen, be careful. You're on a path to the hellfire. And that is the punishment of those who wrong themselves. Allah Azza wa Jalla, he said, فَطَوَّعَتْ لَهُ نَفْسُهُ قَتْلَ أَخِيهِ فَقَتَلَهُ خلص, قابيل, The jealousy grew, grew, and it overtook his life, and he killed his brother. He killed him. Allahu alam how he took a rock, he threw it on his head, he killed him. فَقَتَلَهُ فَأَصْبَحَ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ He killed his brother. Immediately, right then and then, he became a loser. He said, I tell you, the moment a person commits a sin, at that very moment he becomes a loser. You've lost everything. You've lost everything. Right? Because the most important thing is your relationship with Allah. You've damaged it. If the relationship with Allah is damaged, you've literally lost everything. You've become an al khasirin Unless you quickly turn back and you say, Astaghfirullah, Allah Azza wa Jal, please forgive me, bestow your mercy upon me. 
And that is a quality Allah loves from the believer. So there's always hope to retract and to correct your ways and to rectify your relationship with Allah Azza wa Jal. فَقَتَلَهُ فَأَصْبَحَ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Subhanallah. And you see, the thing is here, uh, when a person commits a sin, when you commit a sin, don't encourage others towards this sin. So he thought of the sin, that's bad enough to think of it, and then he went and executed it upon someone. He involved someone in his sin. And so if Allah has tested you with some sort of haram, don't involve anyone in it. Today, it's very easy to share the sin with others. Uh, and there's a button for it, share. You can share her profile with a friend of yours, or a haram content, picture, video, music, clip, whatever it is, and you keep sending. You know what happens? When you do that, when you share the sin, and you, you are the cause for someone else to fall into the sin to see it, you earn a bad deed for that. And that's a quality of Iblis. Because Iblis, when he was cursed, he said to Allah, لَأُغْوِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ I'm going to deceive them all. I'm going to make them all fall into a sin. So when you encourage a sin, you're doing exactly like what Iblis did. So the believer needs to be way. If you've fallen into something, don't you dare share it with anyone. If Allah has tested you, let's say for example, you're smoking, don't smoke in front of people. Don't let them see this. Don't encourage anyone to this behavior. And continue to ask Allah to give you the strength that you break free from it. And you know what happened with uh, Qabil when he killed his brother Habil? And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, listen to this carefully. He said, every single murder that happens on earth, Qabil gets a sin for it. From the day he committed that murder, he's in his grave now. Every single murder that is unjust on earth, he continues to get sins for it. The thing is, if you start a sin, every single time a person does that sin because of you, whether you know about him or not, you continue to earn a sin for it. What a horrible road to go down. Don't come near it. Rather, introduce a good deed. If you taught someone something good, and that goodness continues to spread in the community, if you shared something good as opposed to something bad, and that continues to go around your friends, and Allahu A'lam where it ends up in the world, right? Because the entire world's connected today very easily. You will sleep that night, and hasanat are being added to your good deeds. Look how beautiful it is. So you need to be very careful in this matter. We're coming to the end of the ayat. Allah Azza wa Jal, he says, فَبَعَثَ اللَّهُ غُرَابًا So now his brother's dead. He doesn't know what to do with the body. What do I do with this body? How do I get rid of it? Uh, Allah Azza wa Jal sent two crows. Why two crows? Why not an, uh, uh, an eagle or a vulture or a lion or something else? I could have sent anything else. Why غُرَابًا? See, the, the غُرَاب, it is... It, it's suitable for the crime. Ghurab comes from the word gharib. Gharib means something strange. And that sin of murder was something strange. It was never seen ever before among mankind. And also the ghurab, the crow is black. And black is an evil color. It's the color that Allah Azza wa Jal will change the faces of the disbelievers on the day of judgment. What the swaddu Faces become black. They're the faces of the disbelievers and those who rejected Al-Islam. So this crow is black and it's called strange because the crime of murder is something strange that had never happened before. And also it is black in nature, it's filthy. And that's the nature of all sins. They are all black and filthy. And I said to you, every sin a person commits is making a black dot on his heart, as the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says. You know, you see, if you had white clothes, boys here are wearing white, would you take a texter and start putting dots on your clothes? Like if you scribbled on your white clothing, it'd be much better than putting one dot on your heart, a black dot, which is a sin. Because on the day of judgment, it's not your clothes that are going to be judged. 
It's the heart that is going to be judged. As Allah says. So we need to be very careful. So now this body, what is he going to do? These two crows fought each other. One killed the other. The one that survived dug the earth and buried the other one and closed it. He said, Ya waylata, a'ajaztu an akuna mithla hadha al-ghurab. This is when now Habil, uh, Qabil, he said, Oh, I should be like this crow. I should do like this crow. Fa'awariya sawata akhi. So he dug the earth and he buried his brother. Fa'asbaha minan nadimeen. He became from those who regret. He became a regretter. And that's exactly what happens to a person when he falls into a sin. He starts regretting. Look, 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 look. These people that commit the crimes today, shoot each other, stab each other, sell drugs to each other, hit each other. All of them, number one, losers. Number two, regretters. Where are they? Why don't they walk among the people hack freely and open and I'm here? Where are they? They hide like rats in, a, in, in its cave. They hide because they are regretting. They are worried, they are terrified for every moment they're going to live. And if they don't repent, that worry and terror will follow them in their grave and on the day of judgment. فَتَكُونَ مِنْ أَصْحَابِ النَّارِ As Allah Azza wa Jal said. So we need to be very careful. Finally, Adam alayhi salam, uh, towards the end of his life now, because his son came back and his father was angry for what he did and he killed his brother. Years go by and now Adam alayhi salam has reached the point of death. It's his time to go. So Adam alayhi salam gathered his children and he said to his children, Inni ashtahi min thimaril jannah. He said to them, I am desiring a fruit from the paradise. Go get me something from the paradise. Because Adam lived in the paradise. He knows that taste. He's missed it for many years because he's been on earth. There's no access to fruit from the paradise. Is it possible for his children to get fruit or not? It's very impossible. Where are they going to go? But you know what they said? They said, okay, we're going to get you fruit from the paradise. And they walked out from the house and they roamed the earth to find some fruit of the paradise. What we learn here is you all have parents. Obey your parents. Listen to your parents. Even if the task seemed impossible. Here, this is an impossible task. Where are they going to get him? Fruit from the paradise. But they didn't stand in front of their dad and say, Dad, what's wrong with him? Where are we going to get fruit from the paradise for you? In front of your parents, don't show these manners. Because this type of manner is a sin. Rather, you lower your head and you lower your voice and you say to your mother and your father, Khalas, no problems. My mom, my dad, I will listen. I'll get you what you like. I'll get you what you want. Listening and obeying your parents is a form of worship and it earns you great reward. It's a worship unlike anyone else. So be careful of this matter and be aware of this matter. Now, especially when your parents say to you, get up and pray, read your Quran, revise your kaza, help your brother, your sister, listen, especially if it's a possible task. Anyway, they're going around looking for this fruit. And as a result, what happens? Allah Azza wa sends down angels. And these angels, they come down with shroud. Shroud is the thing they wrap the dead person with and perfume from the paradise. And they see the children of Adam. They say, and the children of Adam didn't know who these people are because the only people on earth are the children of Adam. So they said, who are you? They said, we are angels and we are coming to take the soul of your father. Go back, khalas, they didn't get any fruit. So they rushed back to their father's house, Adam alayhi salam, the angels entered in human form, of course, and Adam knew, he knew that these are angels and Hawa knew that these are angels. And Hawa became worried and she became scared. And she said, yeah, Adam, where are you going? Where are you going to leave us? Because until now, no one has naturally died yet. So Adam alayhi salam said to Hawa, خَلِّ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ مَلَائِكَةِ رَبِّي He said to her, leave us, ya Hawa, leave me between me and the angels of my Lord. He was now prepared and ready to go to Allah and to meet him. And such is the case of a believer. If you live a good life upon Iman, upon Islam, worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal, always purifying your heart through istighfar, through tawbah, salat, and being a good Muslim with good character, etiquette and manners, 
then when death time comes, you will look forward to death. Not looking forward to the pains of death, but looking forward to meeting Allah Azza wa Jal, which is a matter that comes after death, like Adam alayhi salam. But imagine a person that lived a life of corruption and rebellion and transgression, right? And filth and garbage and sin after sin after sin. And he won't look forward at that, at that moment. Angels that are black faced, blue eyed will come to him and they'll rip his soul out. And that's the end of his life. So we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to grant us a life upon goodness and upon righteousness. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وبعد هذا وصل وسلم ورحمكم الله على خير البرية وأسك البشرية محمد بن عبد الله. صاحب الحوض والشفاعة فقد أمركم الله تعالى بأمر بدأ فيه بنفسه وثنى بملائكته المسبحة بقدسه وأيها بكم أيها المؤمنون فقال عز من قائل إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم الجليل يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون